you know, she being great, being, <sighs> hey, yeah, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be watching and reacting to The Sandman, episode 10. Okay, so obviously it's a sad day, but I can't put it off any longer. I need to wrap up The Sandman. Now, I do realise there is another episode after this. There's an episode 11, but from what I know, it's actually separate to like the first 10 episodes. It's like a standalone thing. So I am going to watch that. I'm going to react to it. But as soon as I've recorded today, then I am going to go and start actually reading comments on all the other videos because I think I'm probably safe at this point. It's been probably about three or four days since I recorded episode nine. So I'll just kind of go over a quick recap of what happened last time. Now it ended with Jed and Rose. They finally reunited at the hotel where the collectors were having their conference thingy and where CSI was giving his keynote speech. But Corinthian or CSI caught up with them and was like, oh, it's okay, you're safe with me. And it's kind of like, no, they're really not safe with you at all. Thank you very much. But that's obviously not good because CSI getting hold of Rose being the vortex is not a good thing. So that's quite disturbing. Also in the last episode, Stephen Fry's character, which turns out to be the um, name that I can never remember, Fiddler's Green, he went back to the Dreaming, spoke to Lucienne and told her what was going on with Corinthian and Rose and stuff. And then obviously Lucienne told Dream what was happening. And so he's now aware of the situation, you know, that he needs to get to the waking world quickly to kind of intercept presumably Corinthian and Rose, you know, sort of before they do anything that's gonna obviously disrupt the realm or whatever it is that Corinthians got planned. But yeah, Dream in the last episode kind of annoyed me a bit. Well, he actually annoyed me a lot. Like the way he treated Lyta and her husband, like with their house in the Dreaming, that was just horrible. And I sort of mentioned it a bit in the recap of the last episode, but it's difficult because I, I, you know, I get where Dream's coming from. He's got to protect the Dreaming. He's trying to control what's created there you know he can't just have random shit popping up all over the place and kind of destabilizing everything but at the same time he could have been a little bit more sympathetic i think and i love dream normally he's he's lovely i just want to hug him all the time and he was just not very nice in the last episode i'm hoping he has a bit of growth it was a bit unfeeling of him but then, you know, he's he's an endless, I suppose, isn't he? He's not human, so... Another thing is, we didn't actually see Desire in the last episode, so I don't know what they're up to. It's a bit odd, because we'd seen them, obviously, at the beginning or the end of, you know, sort of a few episodes, and it seemed like they were potentially laying a trap for Dream. So unless they're tied to the Corinthian in some way, I don't know that anything that they're doing is actually happening at the moment. Yeah, it's, it's it's an odd one. So I don't know if we're going to see them this episode. But yeah, I, I, I guess I'm just kind of putting off watching this, to be honest. I, I really want to watch it. I want to know what happens. But at the same time, it's coming to the end of a season. I do like Dream. I love Matthew. I like Lucienne. You know, I like the other characters as well. But kind of them, especially, they've been kind of in it all the way through. So I've got plenty of tissues. Hopefully I won't need them. Oh. <laughs> So yeah, I guess it's time to jump into the episode. So this is my reaction for The Sandman, episode 10. <sighs> Not ready for this. Oh shit, we're starting right off from where we left. Oh god, there's blood there. I'm not... You just killed that man. I just saved your life. Again. And I'm trying to save yours. From whom? From Morpheus. You're one of the missing nightmares. The minute you fall asleep, He's gonna kill you. But if someone protected you... He's technically not wrong. Fifteen minutes till our guest speaker's keynote address. So I'm gonna go downstairs for an hour. Will you wait for me? I'm taking Jed. We're going home. Okay. I'll come back in an hour. If you want, you can let me in. If not, I'll go away. Don't, don't, don't trust him. Dream won't hurt you. He might think he's going to hurt you, but he won't. Gentlemen, ladies. The Corinthian. <laughs> we are killing people. We do not murder for profit. That's all right, then. To close your eyes and see yourself as I do. We are gladiators. Fuck. We are 
hunters. Soldiers of fool. You disappoint me, Corinthian. I have done my best to be what you made me. You were my masterpiece. A dark mirror made to reflect everything humanity will not confront. That's what I am. That's what I've done. No. Infecting others with your joy of death. But what have you given them? So what now? Because I won't go willingly. I don't like this. In love. gonna cry oh, I've got Rose Walker getting stronger every second while you get weaker she's taking your place at the center of the dreaming she's bringing the walls down between the sleepers minds now they're all dreaming the same dream a dream that I inspired no what's already happening she's asleep and dreaming then she has not beyond my reach. This is horrific. You need to wake up. Don't listen to him, Rosebud. You're the one with power now, not him. He told me you were gonna kill me. Did he tell you why? When a vortex brings down the walls between dreams, she creates a single volatile dream that will collapse in upon itself and take the waking world with it. Your world, everything. Can't kill you if you kill him first. Killing me may save your life, but it will not save the lives of those you love. If I'm as powerful as you say I am, then I will find my own way. In the meantime, the walls go back up. Because I'm not dreaming anymore. I'm wide awake. And you don't care about humanity. I contain the entire collective unconscious. Without my rules, it would consume me. Or you might actually feel something. I am not the problem, Dream. You're right. I am only sorry I won't be here to see Rose Walker do the same to you. I'm not crying about Corinthian dying. He was a good character though. It's more relief, I think. You have sustained fantasies in which you are the victim. Comforting daydreams in which you are always right. But no more. The dream is over. Hello, 911. I'm calling to confess to a crime. You want me to follow her? Tonight, when she sleeps, I will find her. And we will end this. Nicely, please. Hey! Guess who's in the car with me? I don't want you to panic. I'm at the hospital. What? The baby's coming. I'm in labor. Oh my god! How is she? Is she okay? Unity? Oh, good morning, darling. I woke you up. I'm sorry. Did you find Jack? I did. He's safe. I'm just afraid that tonight, Dream's gonna kill me. He's not. If you have the power to destroy the world, then you have the power to destroy him. When you go to sleep tonight, you have to find him and end this. The killing dream isn't going to stop it happening. I like lighter, but no. Wherever I go, I know she goes. Yeah. It was a dark and stormy night, and the skipper said to the mate, Chantal, mate, tell me a story, and it's this me. is the story he told. Rose. <sighs> what are you all doing here? The dreams are melding together. Yeah, stay back! Oh, stay 
They're asleep in their bed, but they're not safe. No one is. Not until the Vortex is dead. May I help you? Oh, yes, please. I I'm looking for a book. We have every book ever written, as well as those yet unwritten. I have detailed accounts of Sleeper's dream. Is she the Vortex? Oh, there I am. You're Unity Kincaid. Death is not always such a bad thing. You could stay here if you like. My raven was once immortal. Wait, sir! Gilbert? What are you doing here? You're a dream? I am. I, I left my post here to experience life as a human being, a life which I humbly offer in exchange for yours. I'm afraid that's not possible. I cannot find it in my heart to punish you for leaving Fiddler's Queen, but it is time you took up your appointed position once more. It would be my honor, sir. It was never my intention to abandon my role. What was your role? Who were you? Ah, <laughs> my dear. Fiddler's Green is not a who, it is a where. I thought it was a weird name. If you stay in the dreaming, visit me. Walk in my meadows and my green glades. Rest beneath my trees. Farewell, Rose Walker. It was a privilege being human with you. I do not wish to take your life. I am sorry. Just do it. Whatever it takes to save my brother and my friends. My lord! Stop! Unity? This is Unity Kincaid. I am Rose's great-grandmother. And according to this book, I was meant to be the vortex of this age. Come here, Rose. I want you to reach down inside yourself and give me whatever it is that makes you the Vortex. How? You're dreaming, darling. Anything is possible. I am the Vortex now, Dream King. That should have been long ago. So leave my great-granddaughter alone. Unity. Oh, what happens? You died so that Rose might live. I'm so sorry. No, don't be. I'm not. Wait. The father of your child had golden eyes. I've never seen anything like them. Mr. Holdaway will see to it that you and Jed have everything you need. You and your brother are children of the Endless. You have suffered enough. Goodbye, Rose. We're gonna do this together, right? We already are. Desire. I stand in my gallery and I hold your sigil. I'm coming through. You know you're always welcome in my chambers. Can I get you anything you desire? I desire nothing from you, save some answers. Unity Kincaid should have been the vortex of this era. But someone took advantage of my imprisonment and fathered a child with her, knowing full well that it would become the vortex and I would be forced to kill it. Was I really that obvious? 
What did you truly intend? That I should spill family blood? With all that would entail? A mess with me or mine again and I shall forget you are family. My lord, sorry to disturb you when you're working, but... Is something wrong? No. It's something lovely, actually. A new book appeared in the library this morning, written by Rose Walker. And how is it? You may take issue with the depiction of the king in the story, but I loved it. She is a daughter of the Endless with quite a story to tell. Rosie, send it. It's really good. Are you making new nightmares to replace Galt and the Corinthian? The world does not need a new Corinthian quite yet. I am finishing a dream. I'll leave you to it then. Lucien. You not wish to say hello? You look gorgeous, Galt. May I ask, what made you change your mind about me? I had no right returning here after over a century expecting everything to be just as I'd left it. Lucienne tried to tell me that. So did you. I may be here a while. Would you mind taking care of things while I work? With pleasure, sir. in hell, I think. Yes. Lord Azazel would like a word. The armies of hell are yours to command, should you wish to strike. You wish to invade the dreaming? If you command it. And then perhaps the waking world, even the Silver City. You have given us much to think about, Azazel. He is not to be trusted. No, but he's not wrong. So, um, <clears throat> I've given myself a moment or two to uh, compose myself after that uh, very traumatic episode. Whew. I think I can honestly say that that's probably given me everything that I could have wanted from an ending. Obviously, he didn't kill Rose, which was sort of my main concern. I didn't really think he would, or at least if he did, I did. I knew, or I didn't know, but I, I kind of hoped he wouldn't kind of do it recklessly. Like, okay, she's a threat, she needs to die, let's not think about it, let's just kind of do it and not give it any thought. He obviously kind of struggled with it a bit at the end there, and he ended up not having to because Unity stepped in. And I kind of figured that would happen when we saw Unity obviously sort of halfway through the episode when I mentioned it, literally because it was just, it suddenly struck me that that would be the perfect solution. She was obviously old. She was going to be dying sort of soon anyway. And it was just odd, you know, the fact that she was, she showed up suddenly inside the library of the Dreaming. Lucienne was surprised to see her there. So that's obviously not something that people generally tend to do. So it was then that I thought that actually, you know, she maybe had more powers than we were kind of led to believe. Well, not more powers because she didn't have any powers at that point, but you know, being Rose's great-grandmother, it kind of stands to reason that that lineage may have some kind of affinity with the Dreaming, so that was kind of what led me to think that. It was just all really good. Like, you know, sort of going back sort of nearer to the beginning of the episode, um, when Dream took out Corinthian, and that had me tearing up just because of, like, Dream's whole reaction to the entire thing. I mean, you know, I liked... I didn't like Corinthian, obviously, because he was, like, a serial killer and pulling people's eyes out you know that's that's never a nice thing and eating them I think not the kind of guy you generally tend to like or go for 
you know, as far as the character goes, he was really well played. You know, it, it he fitted like with, you know, what he was supposed to be like a nightmare. It, it was still quite sad when Dream killed him or banished him or whatever it was he did. You know, not sad in that, you know, it was good that he wouldn't be just killing people anymore. But it was, but yeah, I think the thing that actually broke me in that episode was the Stephen Fry bit with Fiddler's Green. It was just like, I thought the name was odd when I first heard it. I thought Fiddler's Green, that sounds like a, you know, like a, a village green or something. I was like, that that's a weird name for a person. So it, it that bit, the fact that he was a place kind of didn't surprise me, but oh, it, it oh, it's, it's just so fitting for him, isn't it? Like his character, like Stephen, Stephen Fry himself is, that's just fitting that he just bursts into like a fountain of leaves and flowers. It was just really, I don't know, it was just really nice. But yeah, that, that bit just absolutely killed me, as you've probably noticed. And then obviously Unity dying was just another one. And it was just like, it was just hitting me. And then, you know, Dream stood there with his eyes. They look like he's going to cry all the time. It just doesn't help matters at all. And then he was just being really reasonable, you know, which is what I've wanted him to be this entire season. And it's what I sort of mentioned, you know, sort of before I started this reaction, was that I hope Dream would kind of grow as a person and become not more human, but like more caring. And that's exactly what happened. Oh God, go. That bit killed me as well. I think literally every second of this episode killed me. But seeing Galt just being made into a dream like with the butterfly wings and stuff it was just like oh it's so good so nice and then telling Lucien to to take charge while he carried on working was just like I just want to hug him I'm gonna miss dream I mean obviously I've got that other episode to watch as well which I'm gonna do um like I said in the next couple of weeks but such a good character I just really 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 enjoyed the series I'm not I, it was nothing like what I expected honestly I, I I'm not quite sure what I expected like, before I picked this up and, you know, when it first came to Netflix, you know, it sort of showed up on my, like, recommended and you just you sort of see the little trailery bit. And I can remember at the time sort of thinking, oh, I, I need to watch that because it looks, you know, it looks interesting. It's like fantasy and I love fantasy stuff. Don't know if they're planning a second season. You know, obviously they've lined it up for that with Desire and with, obviously, Lucifer there. So there's definitely scope for a second season so whether that's happening or not I don't know but one good thing about finishing the season is it does mean I can actually go and look at other reactions for it so that's something to look forward to I'm actually exhausted now but yeah I think I'm gonna go and um, stick my face in a bowl of cold water and try and get some of my composure back so if you've enjoyed this reaction feel free to leave a comment below um, like the video and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video bye bye